Titans up, guys. It's Andy Frisella, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society. And welcome to reality, guys. Today we have Andy and DJ Cruise the Internet. That's what we do. We uh, cruise the Internet. That's what CTI stands for. Uh, we put topics up on the screen. We talk about what's true, what's not true. It's, we speculate and talk about what we think is going on. Um, and then we talk about how we, the people, are the solution to these problems that are being created by all these tyrants in the world. So uh, that's what CTI is about. Other times you tune in, we have other shows. We have shows within the show. We have Q&AF. That's where you get to submit questions and we give you the answer. Now you can submit your question one of a couple different ways. First way is... All right, DJ, good oh, job. Shit, sorry. Second way is you could drop <laughs> your question in the comments on the YouTube uh, episode, which airs on Monday, and uh, we'll pick some from there as well. Uh, other times we have real talk. Real talk is just five to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk, some shit that you need uh, to hear that I think you need to hear, and, and uh, we do that. That comes out on Thursday, sometimes on Saturday, sometimes both. Then we have full length. That's where people uh, come in the show, and we have interesting conversations, just like all the other podcasts that you guys uh that you guys listen to. And then we have 75 hard verses, 75 hard verses where someone who had a dumpster fire of a life used the 75 hard program to turn it around. And then they come on the show and talk about what they did and how you could do it too. Now you can get the 75 hard program for free. It's episode 208 on the audio feed only. Um, if you want the nuts and bolts, the ins and outs, you'll get it there. If you want the in-depth information on the program, Um, there's a book on my website called the book on mental toughness that we just released that we sold out of. So it's back on pre-order. Um, and we've already sold enough pre-orders to sell through the second run. So I'm working on getting some more. Uh, we self publish this thing. And, um, by the way, I appreciate you guys buying those up. Uh, and I appreciate all the love you guys are, are, are sharing about the book. It's pretty awesome to see. Um, but that book has the live hard program in it. Plus, uh, a bunch of other chapters on mental toughness, why it's important, how to build it, and how it can change your life it is designed to be a resource that you go back to over and over and over again when you find yourself off track because mental toughness is kind of like taking a shower. you got to sharpen that uh, blade every single day, and, and it perishes over time, and if you don't uh, you know, brush up on it from time to time, it gets pretty weak. So that's what that book's designed to do. Now, we have this thing called the fee. The fee is very simple. Tell people about the show. You're going to notice we don't run ads on the show. I don't run ads on the show because I don't want anybody telling me what I can and can't say on the show. We get shadow banned. We get traffic throttled. We get f- with all the time. It's very important that if you guys think the message is important that you share it out. So uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. <clears throat> Yeah. Email. Oh, you are you back on? Are you, are you are you ready now? It came so quick. Yeah. I mean, you're used to that, you though, aren't you? That before. Ah. I already got you before you got me, bro. I got you before you. You can't. F- it me, just man. it, it, it came this, out of nowhere. I thought I had like an extra thirty seconds. I was doing some last minute checks, and yeah, fuck, I missed that boat. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I didn't miss the first one. Yeah, missed that one though. What's going on, man? <laughs> oh, we'll start with the race jokes oh, right up front. Yeah, All gotta right. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. What's going on with you, though, man? Good Nothing, weekend. Man. Coming off a good weekend. Uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. 25 years. And that was what, the 12? 25 years of supplement superstores. Uh, first form business. started in 2009. Yeah, just in business. It was 25 years. It was cool. Had our awards banquet. Lots of people came. We had a good time. That was your 12th one, right? Twelve. Was it 12? For for one P, yeah, thirteenth, thirteenth, yeah, man. that's awesome. Yeah, dude. It, it was it, cool. It's awesome. It, <clears throat> I like. I mean, they say like you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, man. But like twenty five years, would you imagine that you know, at nineteen years old, you 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 put the work in, you'll you'll be leading multiple companies, thousands of employees. Like, was that was that the goal day one? No, man. I just wanted to make enough money to to party, bro. Yeah. You know I mean, that's, that's a real yeah. answer, though, yeah. And now that I look back on hindsight, if I had taken it seriously for 25 years, I mean, we'd be f***ing Amazon by now. Mm. But, you know, I didn't figure that out until I was about 15 years in. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hey, man, everything happens for a reason, though, Yeah. Man. So, good timing. Yep. Good yeah, timing. it was cool. Uh, it was more fun when I used to drink and get f***ed up and have them. Can't do that no more, I, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. I'm going to bring that back, though, I think. Yeah? Yeah, exclusively for public o- occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that way I can get those views, man. Yeah, I, I listen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to make it a policy. You know, most people are like, oh, I don't drink in public. Well, I think I'm just going to exclusively drink in public. 
I think that's the play for me, man. I think that's how I could tolerate yeah. uh, being out in the world. Listen, I mean, you you do got to prepare yourself. That's right for reality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guys, we got a hell of a show for you. Um, before we get to our main headlines, I wanted to bring something up that happened over the weekend. Uh, today's a big day when the show's being... Re- you, you good? I was just checking to see if these little covers the was faced the right way. Is mine? I, yeah. I noticed I noticed it on yours, so I had to check mine. Oh, yeah. You look good. Wait, what's mine say? <laughs> it says Real AF. Oh. Yeah. You're supposed to ask what yours. You know the movie? What's mine say? Real AF. Oh, okay. Dude. You know- I, that's dude wearing my car? Was that? No. That, yeah. Yeah, but that was also in Scary Movie. No, that's Dude's Wearing My Car. They got tattoos. In Scary Movie? Oh, that was Dude's My... They're yeah, making they fun of Dude movie. Wearing My Car in Scary oh, Movie. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, but uh, this happened over the weekend. So today's a big day um, in the 2024 election cycle. Right? Mm-hmm. You got the Iowa caucus, 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 caucus going on. The caucus. Yeah. Which I think that... I mean, it's such a weird thing, but it is a very... Like, it's an important... Um, milestone, I guess, in the election cycle, right? Because this is pretty much, it's not like the guaranteed for sure who's going to win, but it's definitely like the guaranteed for sure who's not. Um, Because everybody typically drops out of this thing if they don't do well in this. Um, So over the weekend, uh, DT put out out a a very, very interesting truth that we should talk about. Um, Headline reads, Trump turns on Ramaswamy, disguises support for MAGA in the form of deceitful campaign tricks. This was very, very interesting, um, and I, I would love to hear your ta- thoughts on it. So let's dive into it a little bit. So former President Donald Trump unloaded on GOP primary competitor Vivek Ramaswamy ahead of the Iowa caucuses on Monday. Former president, who is leading in the final Iowa caucus poll, uh, took a shot at Ramaswamy, who sits in fourth place in the Republican primary field on social media Saturday evening. So he put out this tweet. I'm sorry, this truth. And it says, uh, Vivek started his campaign as a great supporter quote, the best president in generations, etc. Unfortunately, now all he does is disguise his support in the form of deceitful campaign tricks. Very sly, but a vote for Vivek is a vote for the quote-unquote other side. Don't get duped by this. Vote for Trump. Don't waste your vote. Vivek is not MAGA. The Biden indictments against his political opponent will never be allowed in this country. They are already beginning to fall. MAGA. Um... Very, very interesting tweet that comes out, right? And again, this was on Saturday. Um, they did, uh, Gateway Pundit did get a chance to talk to Vivek about this. Um, and here, here's the video on his response. What's your, uh, what's your answer, response to Trump's truth post today? I, I, think, one? I, I think this I saw your, I I saw think your Twitter post. I think his post. campaign advisors, is, I'm going to put it in the managerial class around him, was probably a little bit off the mark with it there on that strategy. I think the truth is friendly fire isn't helpful, but I'm not going to be criticizing him. He's a good president. And I respect his accomplishments for this country, and I will continue to respect that as the next president. But we have to open our eyes to the truth, and sometimes the truth hurts. The system, and I've done everything more than anybody else in this race or out of it, to push back against these unjust politicized persecutions. I wrote an amicus brief for the Supreme Court that I think may be better than some of the arguments they're putting up, because I feel an obligation to this country to make sure they do the right thing. But at a certain point, we gotta open our eyes and see these people will stop at nothing. And at this point, I mean nothing to keep this man away from office, and it's disgusting. But we owe it to this country and to our founding fathers to make sure America first doesn't end with Trump. It didn't start in 2016. It started in 1776. And so we have a duty to this country to make sure we see this to another 250 years left. That's why I have a duty to this country to not only stay in this to the very end, but I think we're going to be successful in leading this country to our revival. Thank you. Uh, and very so he basically calls out Trump circle, which we've talked about plenty of times on the show. And it was very, yeah. very interesting because this morning um, there was another follow up truth. Um, and, and this is what it said. It said uh, Donald Trump tweet uh, truth this out. He says a vote for Vivek is a wasted vote. I like Vivek, but he played it too quote unquote cute with us. Caucus tonight, vote for Donald J. Trump, build up the numbers. In November, we must take our very troubled nation, a nation in decline, back from crooked Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats and thugs who are destroying it. MAGA. What's your thoughts on this? Is this just like political play? I mean, you know, I I mean, can they both be right? Yeah, because for sure. Because, you know, I, I've seen this eruption of Vivek hate on the Internet. You know, a lot of people don't trust him, like 
that was the first question I asked him when he came on the show mm-hmm. um, about being the you know Republican Obama. Yep. I think a lot of people, you know, this guy comes out of nowhere. Um, <clears throat> you know, he looks a little bit like Obama. You know, he's he talks like Obama. He moves like Obama. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of mannerisms there. Huh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, by the way, I like Vivek. I'm just going to say this as a dude. Like since he's come on the show. We text regularly. He texts me like a normal human being. He doesn't mm-hmm. try to like big league me or and act like he's a big sh- shot or he's something. Cool. Like he's a normal dude. Yeah. And uh, I like him. I like him. Uh, I I think everything that he said about them not allowing Trump, I agree with that. I don't think they're. I've said this for a couple years now. I don't think. I think that we. If we believe that they are going to allow Donald Trump back into the White House under a quote unquote free and fair election, I think that's a delusional belief. Okay. We just saw what happened in 2020, and a big portion of the country believes, even people who didn't vote for Donald Trump, believe that the election was compromised. And they believe that Joe Biden is compromised. And so, and these are people that don't even necessarily like Donald Trump. So there's a lot of people out here that understand that the election was stolen or manipulated. And I think to think that they're not going to do something like that again or worse is delusional. You know what I mean? So we have to consider that I think Vivek is telling the truth there. And I think everything that Vivek said is, is, is correct. Now, and people say, well, yeah, he's good at saying all the right things. Yeah, he's saying the right things and no one else is saying them. And by the way, I'm not voting for him. I'm voting for f-ing Donald. All right, that's reality. Um, if they allow him to be on the ballot. But the reality is, is like, dude, I personally think they might cheat tonight. I think they might cheat the caucus and, and f- say, oh my God, Nikki Haley supporters showed up or, yeah. you know, uh, DeSantis supporters showed up in mass or even, you know, there it's two degrees outside. Minus, minus up there, and I—I I mean, it's two degrees here in Missouri. Right. Iowa's north of Missouri, and it's my, it's negative degrees there. It's freezing cold over more than half the country right now. They understand that civil unrest is highly unlikely when you go outside for ten minutes and and your face hurts. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, there's all these things that have my gut feeling that there's a potential that this could be with tonight instead mm-hmm. of the main election. That's just something I don't know. Like it, maybe I'm overthinking it, but Trump leads by you know a massive amount in the polls, and if they come out and say you know oh yeah by the way his people didn't show up, I mean, <laughs> I think it's a possibility. It'd be a telltale sign. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, I mean, a couple of things on this, dude. To, to your to your point about them not allowing it. I mean, what you're saying is we can't take it off the table. Is that like it's a I real? It's a real option. Listen, it could be. Listen, there's so many ways that they could sabotage this guy, all right? And and in my opinion, for anybody who, like, is unhappy with what's going on in the world right now, when you look at how hard they fight to keep this guy out and how much they do to really mess with him, that should be, some, at least to me, that's a telltale of- indication yeah. that this is the guy that they are the most afraid of. I don't think anybody could argue that. Yeah. And... We have a corrupt system. We have an oppressive system. And the way I look at it, which isn't the way that everybody looks at it, is that that needs to be dismantled. And I believe he's the only guy that has the ability and the motivation to actually dismantle it. I think if DeSantis goes in, I think he'll do some good things. But I don't think he'll restructure the government because I don't think he lacks the fu- I think he lacks the balls to really do it. Uh, Nikki Haley's going to be a Democrat. Like, she's going to... Nikki Haley will continue to push the globalist agenda the same way that Biden did in a less in a less obvious way um, and continue to move the culture progressive in a less obvious way. And remember, communists work like push, 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 take a step back. Once they get push, 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 take a step back. And they're, they're planning on taking a step back. Maybe if they can get one of these other people in, but if they get Donald Trump in, they understand that their game is over. So when I hear what Vivek is saying, I agree with the things he's saying, but you got to understand, Vivek is a very intelligent human being. He's not a dumbass. All right, you could not like him, you could not trust him, you could say whatever you want. The guy is super f-ing smart, and Vivek understands math. Okay, and by the way, uh, there there is zero f-ing 
percentage of my being that says that Vivek thinks he's going to win the election. Why the fuck would Vivek is smart? He understands he's polling at 4%. He's not going to win the election. It's fucking not happening. So why is he campaigning and why is, what is he doing? Why is he so confident about it too? Hold on. We have to ask ourselves if this man is, is intelligent and we can all see that he's not going to win. He knows he's not going to win too. So then what is he doing? Okay. And then, so we have to consider the options past that. What, well, he could be who he says he is. He could be a patriotic American who wants to dismantle this oppressive shit. I mean, he's the only guy that said, hey, we need a 10, 10, 12% tax. He's the only guy that has addressed any of the issues that we talk about publicly. Yeah. Um, you know, so he could be that. He could be campaigning for the 2028 situation. Who who knows? He could be trying to get popular because he wants to have the social clout to do other things in life. Who knows? You could say all of these things, but the reality of the situation is he what he's saying is true, okay? And, and I agree with what Trump is saying. Like, if you're a Trump supporter, you should not vote for Vivek. You should vote for Trump. If you're an American supporter. I, that's that's our opinion. You know what okay? I'm saying? That's our opinion. And I agree with that. That's yeah. our opinion. But there's a lot of Americans that have other opinions. Um, but the reality is, is look where their opinions have gotten us. Yeah. So I'm just speaking from our perspective. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think they're both right. I think they're both telling the truth. I think Vivek is trying to skate in on, on the MAGA ticket but i don't think he's doing so because he thinks he has a chance i think he's doing so because maybe he wants to be the guy after trump you know what i'm saying the guy with trump and we could think of it like this too these people you know who control the media and and the corrupt side of the government and all these things they this guy he he could be part of their plan for later to control things so we don't know what the we don't know vivek we just don't and i like him like him but a lot of people can't identify with him because bro he came from nowhere it it's he does say all the right shit and i think that freaks people the fuck out but we really do need a candidate that s- stands for the shit that he stands for yeah now but he doesn't have a chance in this election it's not going to happen so you know and i i think trump's telling the truth i think if you vote for vivek thinking that's somehow going to help trump you're a f- idiot it's not going to help him there's no division on the left right now. There's no division. Mm-mm. On the right, there's people arguing for, for DeSantis who are just, they hate Trump, right? They say they're not voting for Trump even if he wins the nomination. Okay, dumbass. So what, are you going to vote for Biden? Yeah, right. Right? You got people who love Trump and f- hate everybody else. You got people for Vivek. You got people for Nikki Haley, which I, apparently, I've never met one. There's like three of them. Yeah. yeah. But, there's so much division on the right, and I believe that's intentional. I believe a lot of these candidates have been goaded into running or pushed to run because they want to divide that base, that powerful Donald Trump uh, conservative MAGA America first base into sections. And it's working. It's divide and conquer, dude. It's no different what they do to the population. And we have all these influencers out here who are so certain about all this shit, who are sucking Donald Trump's dick for f- years and years and years and years and now all every bit of their content is just donald trump hate you know what i'm saying like they've become like the left it's just it's it's we're too stupid bro our side of the the pro-freedom regular american section of the country is is they're they're too dumb they don't work together they don't play together they they want to be right instead of getting the right result You know, these social media influencers who came along in 2020 during COVID who now all have these influential followings are now, you know, uh, forgetting the reason they even started talking about this stuff. You know, it's become this thing for like shares, uh, buy my shit, you know, type content. And, you know, they do it to be controversial and they're doing it for selfish reasons. And, And very few of these people you know, this is their livelihood. This is how they make money now. Like, this is not how I make money. I make money in real businesses. You know what I mean? Like, I do this shit because I want to solve this problem. And it's very frustrating 
to look around and see all these people artificially dividing the right when in reality, bro, for us to actually survive and create the best possible America, we need as much unity as possible. And, and not just amongst the center and the right, but amongst everybody else too. And we can't get that because so many people are so full of their own ego that they've made their brand, you know, to be divisive uh, around certain candidates that like, bro, it's shit up. And I don't know what's going to happen, dude. Yeah. yeah, we shall see, man. Yeah, we shall see. I think it's a, I think it's I think it's bullshit that a lot of these people who were irrelevant before 2020 now that have some sort of following because, dude, I what I. I rearranged my life to do this. I was at the top of this other segment of reality in the entrepreneur business development world. And I rearranged my whole life to come talk about this shit. Like it, it was, it was, it was something that I gave up. And most of these people haven't given up anything. Most of these people are now relevant because they talked about, they spoke out during COVID and now they're selling shirts and they're selling merch and they're selling this. And so everything they say instead of it actually mattering anymore and actually being a team player and being for America and for the future of this country, a lot of what they say is just so they can get clicks and likes and attention to sell shit. And so like, dude, this is, this is where we're at and we can't win like that. We're going to have to unify. We're going to have to get together. We're going to have to work together. And um, it's extremely frustrating to watch because th these people are going to trade their country for their selfish attention. You know what I mean? So he goes. Yeah, that's right. There he goes, man. Yeah, well, we'll stay tuned, guys. We'll uh, we'll know tonight what what uh, well, you guys are watching this. We'll see who uh, who wins this caucus in Iowa, and we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. Remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyfacella dot com. You can find them linked there. Well, guys, let's get into these headlines. We got headline one. Um, it's been a while since we covered it. Thought we'd give a little, uh, just a little insight on our, our thoughts and speculations about what's going on um, over in, uh, in in Yemen and with the Iran. And let's talk about it a little bit. So um, uh, this headline reads: Navy SEALs missing after going overboard during search for weapons. Yeah, they're dead. Somali. I saw that update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're dead. So so two of our our special operators um, have died in an operation trying to recover. Uh, some weapons off of a ship. Yeah. Um, Apparently, from what and and I am privy to some inside information. Sure, they were dead a while ago. Yeah, it wasn't just this and is just now him. that they were. Dead. Yes, yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Similar to the submarine thing. Yep. Yeah, that was actually. I mean, that was part of the. You know, because you know they're 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 saying inciting operational security purposes. They're not releasing any additional information. They knew that the moment it happened. Yeah, they knew at the moment it happened. Um, you know, but this is just one piece of what's been going on the last, you know, four or five days, weeks, really, um, with this, uh, you know, the, the Houthis, uh, Iran-backed Houthis going on in Yemen. Um, we know that, uh, I believe this was Friday, uh, there was a massive uh, airstrike on, in, in Yemen, um, a massive escalation, uh, January 12th. Uh, U.S. and British warplanes, ships, and submarines launched dozens of airstrikes across Yemen against Houthi forces in retaliation for months of attacks on Red Sea shipping that the Iran-backed fighters cast as a response to the war in Gaza. Um, witnesses confirmed explosions at military bases near airports uh, in the capital, Sana'a, and Yemen's third city, uh, Taiz, a naval base at Yemen's main Red Sea port, Hodeida, and military sites in the coastal Haja government. Um, quote, these target strikes are a clear message that the United States and our partners will not tolerate attacks on our personnel or allow hostile actors to imperil freedom of navigation, U.S. President Joe Biden said. Um, here's a couple of images from that strike. Um, I believe all in total it was 150 plus munitions that were used. Um, there was a massive protest, just a quick update, so a massive protest going on in Yemen um, in response to that. Um, and then you got Biden come out. He defended the strike against them. Um, uh, here, here's a clip of his response. Steve, again. Continue bombing the Houthis with the attacks don't stop. Will you continue with the strike, sir? We will make sure that we respond to the Houthis as they continue this outrageous behavior, along with our allies. Wait, wait, wait. Also, he responded about that in the midst of sniffing another young girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They clipped that out. I mean, this is <laughs> yeah, mainstream. Yeah, it's clipped out. Clip. He mm -hmm. totally 
creeps out this like <laughs> ten or twelve ten year old girl. Before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very reminiscent of the uh, of the clip of George Bush getting the news about nine eleven, where he's in front of the kids mm. and just kind of like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me a lot of that. Mm. Yeah. I think they are. What is strike last night, sir? Yes. Very, I don't think there's any civilian casualties. That's another reason why it's a success. Yeah, so double down on them. Um, and then the most recent update, you got uh, in the most recent update, you got Houthi rebels strike a U.S. owned ship off the coast of Yemen in the Gulf of Aden. That was uh, today, right? That was today. Yeah, yeah raising raising tension. So uh, Houthi rebels fought, fired a missile striking a U.S. owned ship Monday just off the coast of Yemen in the Gulf of Aden, less than a day after they launched an anti ship cruise missile towards an American destroyer in the Red Sea. The attack on Gibraltar Eagle, uh, later claimed by the Houthis, further escalates tensions gripping the Red Sea after American-led strikes on the rebels. The Houthis' attacks have roiled global shipping amid Israel's war with Hamas in the Gaza Strip, targeting a crucial corridor leaking Asian and Mideast energy and cargo shipments uh, to the Suez Canal onward to Europe. And what we got on this? Well, I don't think people realize also that the shipping canal they're talking about doesn't really serve the United States at all. It only serves China Mm -hmm. and Asia. Yep. And we're protecting them Mm -hmm. with military strikes. So let's do the math here just so we can understand this. Americans are contractually, through a treaty, obligated to protect the shipping lanes globally. Mm -hmm. That's what their Navy is for. No other country, including China, has a Navy capable of doing that. China's Navy is to defend China and Taiwan and all the little islands and shit around there. They don't have a global Navy. Now, they have some modern ships that are nicer than ours, but the reality is is they're very ill-equipped to do this mission. They can't do both. Correct. So the United States is shooting missiles and destroying these targets in Yemen. Um, And... Killing pirates in the in this shipping corridor for the sake of China's economy. Just so we're clear. I mean, that, that's what the dots say. Okay. So, how's everybody feel about that? That's what's happening. Now, take into account all of the information that we've talked about over the years mm-hmm. about Joe Biden being compromised by China, taking money from China, right? The whole Hunter Biden laptop. It starts to make a little bit more sense as to why this is going on. So, so here's what's interesting is that we could have a scenario where we are pulled into a world war conflict because of this against China for defending Chinese shipping lanes. How does that make sense? Mm. It doesn't. Mm. So that's the first thing that people need to understand, which they don't. They don't understand that. So um, outside of this, you know... Uh, I think this is right along the lines of of oh. what? No, because I just like there. There's even more evidence to that that can clarify, like can verify that this is real, bro. China China has a good relationship, working relationship with Iran. China could easily just pick up the phone, hey Iran, like make sure my shit gets through. Yeah, but no, why not? Why not force the um, the, the the U.S. taxpayers to to spend hundreds of millions, billions of dollars on equipment, weapons, you know? risking lives why not just make them do it instead i mean man the writing's on the wall Uh, no it's not on the wall (laughs) it's on the paper in front of your (laughs) face but people don't want to admit that that's what's going on and people are uneducated about the united states roles the united states navy's role globally so um You know, that's how I see what's going on. I see this is us getting drug into a potential conflict, protecting a country that will be fighting against us in said conflict. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's 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 disturbing. And I think this is part of the agenda. I think this war will escalate. And I think by the time election season comes around, we'll be at full World War Three and probably a bunch of other disruptions, probably a bunch of other stuff, you know, cyber blackouts power outages, some sort of pandemic again. I still think they're going to try to do that. They still put out an article about it every week. Be, you know, right now, like Pfizer's running these. <sighs> Pfizer's accumulating companies that treat. Oh, 
heart arrhythmias and and then they're putting out warnings the global health the world health organization and these other health organizations are putting out warnings saying that this new this new super covid could cause heart attacks yeah i'm sure it has nothing to do with the vaccines you know what i'm saying about, so yeah. so so they get you to take a vaccine which causes some sort of other and this is what people don't understand about vaccines either vaccines are intended by these pharma companies to create side effects that then have to be treated with more pharma. Mm-hmm. All right? All drugs are. Yeah. I mean, the basis so, of it. Like, so you dude, gotta take this drug, but then you gotta take this drug to to fix the side effects from the first drug you took. Yeah, man. They're gonna, they're gonna cause massive mayhem for the next, until, until Trump's out of the picture, 100%. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too, because even going back to our intro conversation, uh, I was gonna put it in it, uh, put it in the uh, the headlines, but NBC actually just wrote out an article. Yeah, about how they're going to take the military and they're, they're how yes. you're talking about how they're going to they they are yeah. trying to maintain control of the military over if Trump gets elected. If Trump gets elected, so they are legitimately saying out loud now. in the media, NBC is saying that, and they're presenting it as a good thing. They are saying that if Trump gets elected by the people of this country, that. There will be a military coup operation to remove him. We'll link it so you guys have it. I was like, I was going to include it, but I was like, I don't, I don't know how the flow is going to work. But yeah, dude, it's real shit. I know, like it's f-ing treason, dude. They already state. did that. They, they've already done the coup, and now they're trying to say that Trump's doing a coup. Right. You know, there was an article also uh, retweeted by Alex Soros that said Brazil survived a coup, talking about Bolsonaro. And how we can avoid the same mistakes that, like, bro, yeah. these people are f- 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 period. Bolsonaro had 10 million people in the f- streets, bro. Luna had zero. The, nobody voted for him. They cheated. And until the people of the world rise up and understand that unity is the only thing that's going to stop this from happening, they're, they're, they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop pressing. They're not going to stop cheating. There is a fundamental difference of the game that we are playing between these communist people and everybody else. Everybody else, all the common sense people, under like, like they are like, this will all work out. This will, this will, this some something will happen. It'll all be good. It all, and then you have the other side that's like literally standing on our throats, waiting for us to die. They don't give a. F- they are not going to relent. They are not going to stop. They are going to cheat in front of your. F- face and then dare you to do something about it and until the common the other side the common people of the world who think logically and have common sense come together and say we're not going to tolerate this they're going to continue to do that there's a fundamental difference between the game it would be like well brother thank you no it would be like this it would be like if i went out on the football field with seven guys and we went out and on the football field was the university of alabama and we're all like yeah they're not going to hit us they're not going to Hit us. And then they f- crush us, bro, and they break our backs. That's what we're dealing with. And by the way, we're the f- guys on the field being like, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. When they have consistently shown that they will do that. And so, dude, the common f- pro-freedom, common sense community of this country and all the countries in the world needs to come to their senses of what they are dealing with in the game that they are playing. They will crush you. They will kill you. They will ruin your life. They will take everything from you. And they are not going to stop until they get their way. And until people understand that and start playing the appropriate game, they will continue to lose. Yeah. That's reality. Yeah. Dude, that, that's the thing. That's the problem. We play by the rules and they don't. That's correct. We're playing a different game than they are playing. And they are playing the game of we will do whatever we got to do. And we're playing the game of we're morally better and we'll take the high road and it'll all work out because God loves us. Yeah. God doesn't reward people who sit on their ass, okay? God rewards people who, t- who do shit, all right? Uh, uh, that's it. There's nobody, there's nobody that ever won a conflict because they're better people. That's not how f- conflicts are won. Conflicts are not won. Business is not won because you're a good person. They're won because people take action and they execute. And right now, the communists of the world, the globalists of the world, they are executing, they are taking action, and they don't give a f- if you notice, and they will take everything from you if you don't, if you f- let them. And that's where we're at. We're playing a different game than they're playing. That's it's it's that simple.
Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think on this first headline. Uh, before we get to our headline number two, let's move on over to the comments. Got some good ones. I've got a couple of them here, actually, for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so this first one comes from at Nick uh, Rezinger, 4645. He says, I find it refreshing to know that Andy is not for Sella. Ha, ha, ha. Nick Nick could come on here and write DJ's jokes. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Uh, I know you did. I thought it was funny. I know you did. Uh, and then this one comes from uh, Zero Gambit, CW2HT. Says, hey, by the way, Real America Freedom Gear has a drop this Wednesday, Wednesday yeah, yeah. at 7 o'clock yeah. on the website, realamericafreedomgear.com. Go go to the f- website. Uh, this this comment, I like this comment, too, from uh, Zero Gambit, CW2HT. They say, uh, we should call it that. The big show. Yeah. People the big like show. That. A lot of comments on that. Yeah. A lot of comments. Um, For those of you who don't know what the big show is, the big show is where we take violent criminals and pedophiles and we put them on pay-per-view weekly and we run them through the wood chipper, dissect them on public TV, give them the Braveheart treatment, <laughs> cut their dicks off, stuff them in their f- mouths, and then take all the money from pay-per-view and give it to the families that they hurt. Yeah. I think that's a fair thing. Yeah. Retribution. Yeah. So that's the, that's how we're going to fix the system, the big show. Yep. Tune in. <laughs> it's not quite as extreme as the purge. The purge comes next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big show, man. Oh, that's gonna be. Oh, dude, that'd be great. Uh, but this final comment, man, I wanted I wanted to put this out here because you know, guys, it really comes down to you guys sharing the show, um, and we definitely appreciate. It. We see it. We know the message is getting out there, um, and it is refreshing to get messages like that, um, like this next one. Uh, this message comes from at Andrew. Uh, Carmona, 1056. He says, the message is reaching far and wide, y'all. My brother recently took me to a pizza joint in the city when I overheard a gentleman a few tables away talking about the show. Me being me, I said out loud, hey, don't be a hoe. And to my surprise, there were multiple people that called back, share the show. It feels more than rele- relieving to know that multiple people just in the pizza shop alone uh, live up to the same beliefs and standards that you teach of and speak of. Thank you for what you do. No ho pizza shop. I love it. It's fucking awesome. Hey man, real talk. Like I just got to say this because you know, like I don't think people connect the dots. But why would you support a company or support an individual who's remained silent for the last four years, not said anything about what's going on, and continue to try to just sell you shit? Yeah. Why would you support that person? Why would you support a person who hasn't been fighting for your freedom or your family or speaking out against the bad things that have been going on? Why do you support those people in business? Take a good look at the products that we offer. Take a good look at the products that the other people who are leading this offer. There's very few of them. And so buy those products instead of the ones you're buying. Okay? These other CEOs, these other people, they're fu- they don't give a fuck. They're showing their true colors by their silence. They don't care what's going on. They don't care about you. They don't care about your family they don't care about your kids future and you're still buying their shit why why are you doing that buy shit from companies who actually stand for the right things these are things that are important if we don't have economic awareness about where we spend our dollars then we're missing a big part of the play so that's my little pitch you should be able to connect those dots i saw a dude i saw a dude uh you know using another company's protein powder and i'm like i asked him very simply i said What have they done for you? What have they done for your family? What have you spoke out for? What have they done? What what did they do during COVID? What did they do during all this free? Oh, they didn't say shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if you want leaders, bro, you got to support those people. So I'm just going to say that. We got to be smarter about that. And if it ain't me, then support someone else who's doing that. Buy their shit. But don't be blindly being customers of people just because, you know, You've used their product for this or that or this. There's plenty of people out here who are speaking up and using their platform, taking risks that, quite honestly, deserve your business more than these other people. The and they make better products, too. All Every single product we make at First Form is 110% money back guaranteed. Show me another company that does that. Show me a single one. Can't find it, man. Can't find it. But, yeah, man, we appreciate all you guys. We really do. Thank you for uh, for being real ass fans. Yeah. So let's get back to the cruise. Uh, we have headline number two. This is a very interesting topic. Um, and when I saw this, it reminded me of that Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so let's dive into this. This headline, this is a daily, uh, daily wire headline. It reads FBI arrest transgender man who threatened to kill transphobes suggest ties to alt-right extremism. <laughs> extremism. I can't even get out of my mouth. What? Yes. You read that right. So let's dive into this. So yeah. what? <laughs> I don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So this, they're saying that an FBI arrests a transgender man mm -hmm. who threatened to kill transphobes, but that that man is tied to alt-right? Correct. So the transphobes are on the left? Right. So people on the left who support trans are actually transphobes? Right. Hmm. Yep. Well, that's some mental gymnastics. <laughs> some mental... <laughs> yeah. Like, that's like the Rubik's Cubes of justification. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Let's dive into the story a little bit. So federal prosecutors on Friday charged an Oregon man who believes he is a woman for posting to a, quote, trans woman support group that he planned to go out in a, quote, blaze of glory after a search of his home found 27 guns and, quote, tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. That sounds a little light. Yeah, I mean, I think you should have 28. I, it sounds a little light to me, man. Uh, Elizabeth West uh, was charged with making interstate threats based on the t September 26th Facebook post to the group, quote, Trans Women Support Group, which came as he said he believed he was about to be fired and was tired of, quote, transphobic assholes. Quote, I'm too old to keep looking for jobs, and I've had it up to here uh, being bullied by transphobic assholes. I am left with no alternative, West wrote, according to court documents. Quote, I've been preparing for this moment for a long time. At least then I'll be remembered. No, you won't. I have no family, no friends, so there, isn't, uh, so there really isn't any point living anymore. Uh, the FBI did not arrest West. That's what happens when you cut off your dick, bro. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. People, people look at you and they say you're weird and you don't have no friends. And then you end up thinking, how my life gets so fucked up? Well, it started with you cutting off your dick. Yep. Should have went to the scalp. Bro. Shouldn't have done it. Nope. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. So the FBI did not arrest West after the September interview that was ultimately used to justify the charges. Instead, it arrested him months later after checks of his social media exhibited racial hatred towards black people, immigrants and Jews. His social media bio, according to the court documents, was, quote, a Nazi dominatrix from hell who is tired of the blackening of America and Europe and ready to stand up to the black orcs and the Jewish wizards. Now, why do you why, why do you not like black people? <laughs> His animosity of other races appears to be heavily related to West's gender ideology. West's hatred of black people, it says in court documents, is because they often, quote, misgender him, and a group of black men once physically assaulted him. For immigrants, the hatred was because he learned of an immigrant on um, Oregon's public health care plan who got free transgender surgery, while West would have had to pay for his own gender surgery. Um, so for months, the FBI monitored his social media and questioned him about his racial views on January 9th. After agents monitoring him were alerted of a gun purchase, it executed the search warrant and arrested Wes. The affidavit references, quote, far right terror, white supremacy and alt right extremism, portraying the madman as a conservative <laughs> terrorist. So wait, so when he was just a trans dude who hated people because he was trans and they, he couldn't assimilate into a normal population, he was allowed to continue to operate his extreme viewpoints mm -hmm. and potentially talk about shooting people and murdering people. But the minute that he started talking about... He was, all, he was left up until then. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. who are all these shooters that have done all these shootings <laughs> this last few years? Hold on. Wait. Oh, you got this. Oh, oh wait. Oh! <laughs> I love how I love how you make the show so I naturally connect the dots. Bro, dude, it's we're there, in unison, man. bro. It's there. We're ebony and ivory. Yeah, hey, listen. That's right. We're driving. Ebony and ivory <laughs> go together in perfect harmony. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. They wrote it for us. Just saying, bro. Like, 
And not only on not only the active shooters, bro. Did you see this? Like, you know, leftists dominate the FBI top ten domestic terrorists. So the top ten domestic terrorists for the United States, there's not one right ring, alt right, super MAGA, not one. That's bullshit. Not one. I have worked long and hard <laughs> <laughs> to earn a position on this list. Not one, Andy. Damn. Not one. Not one. Shocking. Not one. I don't know if I'm more shocked that I'm not. I didn't make <laughs> it, or that it's all <laughs> lefties. I'm actually not shocked that they're all on it, dude. It's not one. Look at these people, man. Oh, dude, there's some crazy people on here. Yeah, they're all there's crazy. Some crazy, all of them. Yeah, the the FBI bureau has sounded the alarm. Two alarm. communists, <laughs> three black nationalists, one anti-war activist, and a vegan eco terrorist. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the, sounds like the. Expendables, fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the weird thing, bro, is like a lot of these people they all like hijacked planes and booked it to Cuba, like a bunch of them. Black man, uh, George Edward Wright, black man who was convicted of murder, escaped from prison and hijacked a plane. He pretended to be a reverend and hid his gun inside of his Bible. A Hispanic man hijacked a, a plane flying from New York to Florida, he demanded to be flown to Cuba. So, like, all, a lot of these people are just down in Cuba, bro. Yeah, because it's communist down there. No extradition. What's he got there? What is that? Uh, it looks like a little scorpion. What is yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't like those scorpions. Yeah, I mean, they're all right. I, I like the B&Ts. B&Ts are better. They're, yeah. they're, they're definitely superior. That little, the, the SIG, uh, the MPX, that's a good MPX one, MPX is good. Yeah. That's a good one. But B&Ts, like. Yeah, B&Ts. It's up there. Yeah, that's for us bougie folks. Mm-hmm. Gucci Glocks. Who shoots that BNT better, me or you? Um, <clears throat> yep. You guys sell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I'm just saying, like, hey, it's there. Uh, you know, it makes sense, man. You know, just ask them. They'll explain it to you. <laughs> it's like, it's just so crazy. Like, it's just like they wait. Bro, uh, they, so they allow these people to go extreme terror and shoot up schools and shit but then when the minute they start talking about jews or blacks or anything else they arrest them up yep straight to jail straight to jail i thought it was just interesting, interesting. very interesting um guys tell us what you guys think Let that us... headline like go yeah. back to the headline yeah, yeah, yeah. let's let's think about like let's think about how, how first of all <laughs> how stupid <laughs> first of all man transphobic assholes uh -huh. look dude you guys try to force shit on people that they are not going to be. F it's if you were just polite, <laughs> no, for real, dude. If they were just polite yeah. and didn't f try to jam the like forcing people to use specific, pr bro, you're a dude. Those dudes did not misgender you. You are misgendering you. Mm -hmm. That is the whole problem here. You walk around, you're six foot three, two hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds. And you you dress like a little child. You don't dress like a woman. Mm -hmm. These guys never dress like women. They dress like little girls. What do what do you think that means? Why would you, as a grown man, wear a women's outfit? But instead of wearing a woman's outfit, you're wearing a little girl's outfit. Go to Forever Twenty One. What is that? No. Yeah. Or you know they're dressing like Rainbow Bright. You see what I'm saying, bro? Like, they tell on themselves if you pay attention. So, first of all, you're the asshole, okay? <laughs> Second of all, they didn't misgender you. You misgendered you. You're a dude wearing women's clothes. And if you're a normal person who would like to wear, you, you're a guy and you want to wear women's clothes, if you act like a normal human being, you're going to treat it like one. And yes, people are going to look at you weird because you're weird. It's weird. It is weird. Dude, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> that, it's it's abnormal. We, what's it's the not, definition yeah. of what's the definition of weird? What is it? You gotta go down past the picture of you. <laughs> See him and that dude at the f comment. They're writing <laughs> jokes together now. Uh, suggesting something supernatural, uncanny. It's uncanny. It's uncanny. It's not normal. You don't see it every day. You don't see a six foot three, two hundred forty pound. Little girl. That's why they like unicorns. Okay. Because they also don't exist. And then you're asking us to pretend that that's not the case. Are you telling me I'm like f***ed up or, or bad if I don't Yeah, I'm a bad it? person because I noticed that you're a, that you have a dick. Yeah. No. Like, 
l- l- this shit's absurd, man. <laughs> Listen, dude, I'm sorry. I'm tired of it. Yeah. I'm f- tired of it. I don't give a f- what you think. And it's not homophobic. It's not transphobic. It's just the reality, man. Act like a normal human. Be cool and people will give you less shit. If you were, if you, like, bro, trans people are their own worst enemies. Yeah. Because if they assimilate into culture and act like normal people instead of forcing everybody and demanding everybody and calling everybody a bigot because they called you the wrong pronoun, it's an awkward situation, man. You're standing in front of me, and I know that you're a man, and you know that you're a man, and yet you get pissed off if I say bro. Like, <laughs> am I out of line here? No, I'm just saying, like, th- to me... This is, this is, it's just awkward. It's an awkward thing. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, Dave Chappelle has a great joke about this. Did you ever hear his segment on him? Look, him meeting Jim Carrey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bro, it's great. Anyways, that's how I feel about trans people. (laughs) But it's the truth. He met Jim Carrey when Jim Carrey was playing uh, Andy Kaufman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's a, he's a, he's a, I don't know what they call it, but he's the kind of actor that immerses himself. Like a method actor. Yeah. A method actor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Joaquin Phoenix is like that too. A couple of these other guys that are really good. The Peaky Blinder guy. I don't know. Um, but kill him. look, dude. So he meets Jim Carrey, and Jim Carrey's in the middle of this movie, mm-hmm. and and he's like, you know, just plug the f- clip in here. Well, we don't have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just plug it in and watch it for yourself. Yeah. This is what. This is the truth, though. This is the truth. The re- Did you hear everybody laugh? Mm-hmm. You know why they laughed? Because it's f- true. Mm-hmm. It's awkward as. F- guys and if you're a trans person you do yourself some big favors by just being cool man just being cool realize like dude i'm not normal i don't look normal and i can't expect the entire world to treat me normal don't dress like a little girl if you if you're gonna you know what i'm saying like dude that's my that's my biggest thing make it convincing bro like you go to taiwan or something like that bro you wouldn't be able to tell well, I mean, you know look, what I'm saying? yeah, well, you know, those people are small and these people here are not small. I don't like, even think it's about that, bro. It like, is about it's, that. It's just like, it's not convincing. You're not going to go to f- Taiwan. Look, bro, you go to Taiwan, you see one of these, they call them lady boys. Yeah. Okay. That's what they, that's, <laughs> they're called lady boys or Benny boys. That's what they're called. In, uh, um, in Thailand. Sing- Singapore okay? and shit. Yeah. yeah. So. But they'll let you know right up front too, though. That's the other thing. They'll let you know. How do you know that? god damn it <laughs> here's the point yeah the point is this uh-huh. you you're you're like uh leah thomas yeah, yeah, yeah. or when michael thomas or whatever the guy's name is the guy's six seven or some shit mm-hmm. okay Man, most, look in the mirror do you look like a woman for real like do you really think you do you're he only, okay, look, bro, we're asking to we're at, we're being asked to pretend, and then and then if we don't pretend, we're being called names and bigots and shit. It's ma'am. It's not bigotry, bro. You're asking us to lie to ourselves to what we know is true for your well being. That means that we are discrediting ourselves and our own confidence and our own belief and our own integrity to appease you. Mm-hmm. And then we're also teaching you that you can get your way through bullying. And then if if we don't do it, you say that you're bullied. No, you're bullying people and and you're crossing boundaries and then you don't like it when people say no. I'm sorry, I'm one of those people. And I don't have any hatred towards trans people unless you're f-ing with little kids and doing that. F- pervert shit you can exist you can be just like everybody else but i'm not giving you special treatment and i'm not giving anyone special treatment i don't care what race they are i don't care what you're a human being bro we operate on meritocracy we operate on content of character which by the way it's martin luther king day today yeah it is okay it's also uh very oppressive today because of the weather (laughs) well it's definitely not it's definitely not warm yeah, it's a pride. Yeah. <laughs> MLK holiday. Go back. Wait, wait. We got to read the headline. MLK holiday celebrations are planned across the nation, but winter storm is limiting some. Yeah. Is that racist good. weather? Climate change is racist. Got to watch out for that. Why ice. climate? Sh- yes, because it fucks <laughs> up Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Yep. <clears throat> Look, dude, here's the reality. Mm-hmm. It's meritocracy. Are you good at the job? Can you do the job? It's content of character. Are you a good person? That's it. That's all Outside of that, I don't give a f- I really don't. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're a lesbian. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You don't I don't care. care. You cut it off. You put Velcro tape on it. I don't care. It don't matter. But stop jamming it down my throat. Stop jamming it down little kids' throats. Stop all this f- 
crazy shit. And it's going to stop one way or the other. I'm going to tell you that because Americans are done with it. Yep. So, you know, transphobic. You're the transphobic asshole. <laughs> you're the you're the asshole, bro. Not us. Mm-hmm. You're the asshole. You're the one. I don't walk into your house and tell you what the f- to say. I don't walk into your house and tell you the way it's going to be. That's your f- that's my place. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine if I imagine if I walked up to someone like, dude, you can really do this now. If I walked up to someone, me, I'm 260 pounds, bro. And I walked up to someone. And they said, sir. And I said, I'm a ma'am. And like looked at him dead serious, bro. And then I have and then I pulled out my phone and I'd be like, what'd you call me? Just, oh, bro, let's do it. No, I'm just saying that's what these people do. That's, exactly, that's what the f- they do. That's what they do. Yes. And like. So it's this person's fault that he observes me as a f- man, and he's calling me a man. Well, what do you think I am? <laughs> oh, I'm so <some> man. <laughs> You're talking about that guy at Sonic. Yeah, That's the Sonic best one ever. Bro, it's great. That's the best one ever. No, I think the GameStop one's better. <laughs> Cause he wasn't even trying. It was just like <laughs> no. The best one is that old man, like who had the comic store or whatever, and he just. Yeah, f- what about? Oh no, no, no that's different. It's oh, a dick. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't give a. F- you. Yeah, he's awesome. That's the best one. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, bro, I, I'm listen, man. I'm all for freedom, and you are free to do whatever you want to do as an adult. You are no, you are not free to indoctrinate our kids. You are not free to shake your dick in front of kids because you think it's freeing or progressive or whatever you f- think. You're not free to do that here in this country, and I'm not for that. You know what I'm saying? Well, You're not free to demand people call you a certain thing otherwise they're bigots or they're immoral or they're pieces of shit you i'm i'm sorry dude if that offends you tough shit Mm -hmm. i'm not i'm i'm not playing you know not everybody's cup of tea man yeah and that ain't transphobia bro i'm i'm just done with all the crazy shit you're not go this is me being a sovereign human being that has my own opinions and my own standards and my own willingness to observe and speak truth and you're not nobody is going to interfere with that you and that's what America needs to get back to. If we all got back to this, none of this crazy shit would be happening. Mm-hmm. Bullying. Yeah. Well, bring it, bring it back. You know, it's not bullying. It's just standing on your line. Yeah. That's what they'll call it, but you got to be okay with that. Well, I have, tr- I have people that I'm friends with. Believe it or not, I have people that I am friends with that I have known for many years that are f- trans. I have people in my family that are trans. Yeah, I love these people. They're good people. They don't f- with kids. Mm-hmm. They, don't f- they don't believe any of it. They don't believe that grown men should be shaking their f- Ball sack in front of little kids at drag, uh, drag story hour or whatever. They don't, they don't believe none of that shit. They're just like they are different and they want to live different. And I have no problem with that. But this, this shit, like, Mm-mm. you know, I'm not, I'm not doing it, dude. And other people got to start doing it too. And you, and when they call you transphobic, say fuck you. Then I don't give a f- f- call me whatever the fuck you want. Yep. That's where I'm at. You're still a dude. Listen, dude. I get asked all the time, how do you get on the internet and say what the fuck you say? Because I don't care. I don't care. Sticks and st- I was raised like this. Sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt me. And a lot of you pussies weren't raised that way. Oh, they call me racist. Well, are you? Yeah. No. Well, then what the f*** are you worried about? What? I am a little bit. I know you are. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You are a little bit racist. Yeah. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying, though, dude? Bro, it's like, it's hold simple. on, for real, dude. It's why Why are people so f- weak around this? What the f*** is wrong with you all? Because I felt like, I mean, because it was like the feeling that it actually had power. No, no, no. Dude, exactly. That's all it is. Exa- 10 years ago, dude. 10 years ago, if you got called racist, bro, end your life. Yeah. You might as well just go f- kill yourself. If you were a white dude and you got called racist and you got a group of f- Karens on the internet calling you racist, you were done, bro. You got fired from your job. You- and that power is now exhausted. Yeah, and it was exhausted because of all of the- The overuse. The overuse and the- Now we can't even identify real racism anymore. And everybody's racist, so nobody's racist. Yeah. And if everybody's transphobic, nobody's transphobic. That's just that's just the way it is. Bro, listen, I, I'm just to the point of f- you. Yeah. I don't fucking care. Yeah. Like, you know how old people get to that point where they don't give a f- <laughs> you, you understand? Like, like Grant Torino? Yes. Yeah. 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 Or like, yeah, exactly like yeah. that. Get off my mother lawn bro <laughs> that's where i'm at but see you know you know what i figured out i was thinking about this because i definitely have that you know i have it. oh yeah yeah like like my neighbor the neighbor guy was mm-hmm. f- you man yeah cough mm-hmm. um i figured out why i'm like that at a young age because you know it usually takes people to like 70 to get to that point where they're like f- 
fuck you. A couple of diapers. Here's yeah. what it is. Well, here's what it is. <laughs> I could have used some of those being real, like on my rucks, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I get out there, we get far away. It depends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we carry a pack of extra underpants yeah. all the time, don't we? It's, it's important. Yeah, it is. It's important. You know, I don't, you don't readiness. You get to be above 40, bro. You stop trusting farts, man. <laughs> That's real shit. Okay. Dr- Joe, is that true? That's f-ing true. And any of you listening to this show, if you're above 40 years old, you're f-ing lying if you say that ain't true. You don't trust farts. Yeah. yeah. Ever. All right. But secondly, especially when you're supplementing with a lot of magnesium, <laughs> I'll just throw that in there. All right. Magnesium is good for your brain. It's good for a lot of shit. It's bad for your butthole. Yeah, bad for your toilet paper. Bro. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I finally figured it out because I've always wondered, like, why do I not give a f- like an old person, but I'm only like half their age? Mm-hmm. Well, it's because I've worked that much in my life. Mm. I've had enough hours put in because of business and dealing with human beings yeah. where my give a f- is exhausted. Yeah. It's gone. You don't care. The, you're at that age. Yeah, I don't care work. anymore. Yeah. Like, f- you. Yeah. It feels wrong, good, too. Nothing wrong with it, man. It feels good, too. You combine that attitude with the attitude of you know you're an imperfect person and you know you made mistakes and you know that you know everybody else made mistakes, and you you like say, okay, well, I'm just not going to make that mistake anymore, and you move forward, and then you combine it with f- you. It's a very liberating f-ing way to live. Powerful shit. Yeah, very liberating. You Powerful don't feel shit. pressure. You don't feel stress. You don't you don't feel anxiety. You're just kind of like, yeah, I'm a. F-. It is what it is. I f- shit my pants once in a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only pressure I got is on my anus. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes that pressure becomes a little too much to bear, if you know what I'm saying. Sometimes maybe good. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Guys, let's get to headline three. You're the f- asshole, asshole. <laughs> All right. Headline number three. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about those outfits some more, man. God, I'm just going to wear that every f- day, all day. I swear to God, <laughs> this is what I was born to wear. Yeah. I was born at the wrong time bro i should have been born in seven like i should have been born in like 17 like 50 no for real 1755 what that's a little far back andy that's a little far back <laughs> listen i would have been on your side <laughs> <laughs> i ain't never happened in the time machine with this mother. let's just go back here hold on right there you stop right there all right Bro, look at the most serious. Hey, hey, easy. No, bro, when it comes out that Trump really is a time traveler, we get to use his machine. You ain't going. I'm is that it? That All right, cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right here when you guys get yeah. Don't f nothing up. Anyway, that's the point. I was born to wear that shit and cut off tyrants' f- heads. That's it. Holy shit. That's it. I was sent here at the wrong time. Maybe I was there then, too. It's possible. Yeah. It like reincarnation? Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. I, I think that might be a good I sure thing. look good in that outfit i'm just saying that bro just saying that i look pretty decent yeah you dude you look very refined yeah very proper it looks like you would have a british accent bro, <laughs> what why does this remind me of Django? <laughs> <laughs> like why did that just not click for me hold on hold on hold hold the f- hold on bro Django had like a did he have like a was it blue outfit was it Hold on, my dad. I just saw. Yeah, but see, f-ing, uh, the doc, well, dude, the doc dressed nice too, didn't he? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but we're still on the same team, bro. <laughs> we're still on the same team. I'm fighting your fight, bro. Hold on. And, and if we're being honest, dude, the doc was savage in that movie. He f-ing shot mother, bro. He was a killer. Yeah. <laughs> There we are, man. We're famous. We're in the movies. <laughs> Bro, I ain't never... I... <clears throat> so anyway, about that time travel. <laughs> <laughs> that f- does look like us. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm just looking at him like, damn, where have I seen this before? I, well, maybe that's why I like it so much, huh? All right. Maybe I'm as racist as you. That's fine. Let's show a little bit of it. We got headline three. <laughs> headline number three reads: Georgia DA Fannie Willis claims improper relationship accusations are based on race because only black people cheat. I added that little part at the end there. <laughs> this is confusing. 
So this, so, so this bitch was a side chick. Okay. Let's, let's go let's, through the story. Let's, let's, let's dive through it. Let's dive through it. So Fulton County, Georgia, District Attorney Fannie Willis, who brought charges against former President Donald Trump on election interference, claims allegations brought against her of having an improper romantic relationship with a prosecutor were made because they are black. Court documents filed earlier this month. Well, say, could we say that the reason that she filed those charges against Trump was because he was white? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yep. So court documents filed earlier this month say Willis hired special prosecutor Nathan Wade, her alleged partner, to prosecute Trump. That's, that's sexual partner, not sexual. business partner. Yeah, yeah, sexual partner. Sexual relations. Bro, one time I was at a party, bro. And me and Chris were there, and we were dressed up nice. And I always say this, my partner, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and I could tell they were f- confused. I can see Chris, Andy, you got to stop saying this shit. No, man. they were confused. <laughs> they were like, I'm like, business partner. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you said that shit now. We were ruined. <clears throat> um, maybe no, Maybe that might be the way to unite. I, I think we would get like all kinds of government grants and shit if we just bro. said that. Bro. Yeah. Plus, then I could really say whatever I want, and y'all couldn't say f- shit. Yeah, FBI will leave you, you f- homophobes. Yeah, FBI will. Leave you don't you like alone. me? You're f- homophobe. This actually works pretty good. <laughs> you know what? I love dicks. <laughs> I do, <laughs> especially my own. <laughs> love it. That means I'm gay. You can't criticize me, or you're f- homophobe. FBI will leave you alone for a few months. That's now. right, mother. <laughs> you better not. I'll f- sue you. <laughs> Homophobic motherfuckers. <laughs> Homophobic assholes. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so what? <laughs> what? Y'all don't love your own dicks? <laughs> Y'all a bunch of liars. So, so, so let's paint the picture real quick, okay? So you got Fannie Willis, okay? She's having she, she, this guy, Nathan Wade, okay, who is an outside attorney, does not work for Fulton County, Georgia, right? He's just a, a local area attorney. He's married. Local pipe, local pipe layer. Local pipe layer. He's married. Him and Fanny been getting it on. Okay. Now, Fanny decides, you know, let's just say it wasn't on race. Fanny decides, you know, hey, Donald Trump, he's guilty. Right. So she, in in order to buy, pro, bypass the whole, you know, because the prosecutor has to be selected and there's to bypass that whole process. She elects the guy that she's having relationships with. Right. As a special prosecutor, which means that bypasses all, like, she has the authority to do that, right? She hires him to be the special prosecutor to prosecute Trump, right? Her boyfriend. Her boyfriend. Got it. Right? And then proceeds to pay him almost three quarters of a million dollars in one year. That sounds illegal. In one year. That sounds illegal. But you know what? If you point it out, you know what you are, right? I'm racist for pointing it yeah. out. Yeah. For sure. There's no doubt about it. Um, you are. I am. And 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 it wasn't even that. Like, I mean, here here's the more sinister part, the really fucked up part about this whole scheme. Um, is and, and this has all been it's all in it's all in court, bro. It's all in court. Um, and that's how it got caught up because Nathan Wade's wife filed for divorce and named Fannie Willis in the divorce as far as the reason. That's how it came out. That's how it came out. This is just recently. This is just recently. That's how it came out. <sighs> right? <clears throat> But all of that this, sounds like a mess, bro. It's 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 it's, it's a dark black mess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, but but here's the the really fucked up thing about it, right? And, and and because stuff is starting to come out to light, documents are being you know unearthed, right? There was a couple of invoices that were put out. Um, this invoice is from uh, May twenty third of 2022 and this is nathan j wade the law offices of nathan j wade the 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 the, the guy she was he charged and billed fulton county and its taxpayers two thousand dollars to go to the white house to meet with the white house council now this is months almost a year before any charges were even announced and this guy is going on Fulton County's dime, paid by taxpayers, to go visit with White House counsel. And it wasn't just one time. They did it again in November of 22. Another $2,000. Go back. Okay. 
never mind. You did it again. I thought they submitted the exact same invoice twice. No, different invoices. This was just in November. Yeah. So this 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 chick is fucking. Well, that, I mean, <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah, I mean it's just, and like I mean to me this actually proves some corroboration. Why would you be meeting with your opponents? Why would you be meeting the guy you're charging? Why would you be meeting with his potential opponent for elections? And meeting with their their like because you're trying to sabotage the election and ruin your political so opponents. Who invited you there? Did you guys extend the invite? Did the White House invite you? How did yeah. that work? Yeah, no shit. How did that work? Yeah. I think that was an order. Just so that's called of you you should be here at this time. Just saying. And, and guess what? Taxpayers are paying for it. Um, so she responds to, to all of these allegations. Um, <clears throat> let's see what she has to say. I appointed three special counsel, as is my right to do. Paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attack one. Isn't it them playing the race card when they constantly think, I need someone from some other jurisdiction in some other state to tell me how to do a job I've been doing almost 30 years. Pause. No, lady, that's that's not. And here, why are why is it that these people get up and blatantly lie like this, and then black people for whatever reason just go along with it? Well, I, I was going to say this after the video, but because look at their look at all the people's heads here. None of these people are that dumb. They all know what the f she did. They all know she got caught, and they're like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. racism." Well, not to mention that you know, the, so the money, the, the almost three quarters of a million dollars that was paid out to Nathan Wade. They then used that money to fund lavish vacations. To Florida, the DR, the Caribbean. That's all taxpayer dollars. This is her boyfriend. Right? Why are they so surprised that a diverse team that I assembled, your child, can accomplish extraordinary things? God, wasn't it them that attacked this lawyer of impeccable credentials? The black man I chose has been a judge more than 10 years, run a private practice more than 20. Represented that dude right behind her, he ain't buying it. No, no, Sir, that's the only guy there that ain't buying it. A criminal defense lawyer, special assistant attorney general. How come God, the same black man I hired, was acceptable when a Republican in another county hired him and paid him twice the rate? Because you don't know, yeah. Republicans <laughs> judge me good enough. But the black female Democrats Stop. not. I'm so sick of hearing this shit about black this. Okay, like, bro, you're a f***ing criminal. Just because you're black doesn't mean you get to get away with... with That's not why you're getting picked on. If it was anybody doing this shit, bro, it's wrong. nobody's buying this. I've seen this clip all over the internet, bro, and they're getting destroyed in the comments. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't like, think even black people are like, bro, this is tired. This is causing more racism. This you all Nobody's are causing gonna believe us. you're making it harder for us. Like black people are starting to realize that these people are f f mm -hmm. and by the way, they are correct. These people, these are the people who f instigate and propagate racism in this country yep. because they make everything about f race. No, you are a criminal. You did criminal shit. You misuse tax dollars. You're a corrupt f bitch and f you. And if you say anything back, you're you're homophobe. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think this guy was buying it either. Like, look at his face. That guy. <laughs> no, you know why? Because he's old enough to have been through the actual civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. He understands this is all bullshit. Yeah, dude, it's complete bullshit. Um, but speaking of DEI hires, because that's what the f she is. Did you see this FAA bullshit? Biden's FAA is actively. Oh, so you were serious about getting racist? Oh, f yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah! Just just a little bit, dude. Anyway, it's all right every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like 13 percent of the would time. Would you fly? <laughs> <laughs> would you fly on a f plane? Mm -hmm. This is a real question. Answer yeah. in the comments. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what your race is. Would you fly on a plane mm -hmm. because someone was given the job? Because they like to have sex with a certain other kind of person, or they happen to be a certain gender, or they happen to be a certain racial background. No. Would you fly on the plane if you, 
if that was the criteria for the pilot to meet? Nope. Nobody would. I'm not flying with a black pilot at all. <laughs> Dude, shut the f*** up. I said, Andy, we get on the jet and there's a black, I'm getting off. Don't trust him. You're such a liar. Anyway, that's, I don't, the point is, it shouldn't matter what your gender is or what your race no, is. No, just don't f- crash. Get yeah. There. Be as the long f- as you f- one. can pilot the mother plane bro. bro listen so let's ask some real questions of the people and i want some answers in the f- comments here would you fly on a plane if the if the pilot was chosen based upon their gender their sexual preference or their race would you have a surgery if the surgeon was chosen off their gender their sexual orientation or their race what would you yes or no mm-hmm. and if you say yes you're f- idiot <laughs> like see that's the problem with this thing man like you know like because here's the thing like you can all the people that say yes to that should all go live in their own world bro you guys can have california you can have it man it. the weather's great the weather's great <laughs> <laughs> you guys can have it you can have it you can walk around the street with your dirty drug needles and the feces in the street and your starbucks and, paper straws and none of your shit will work because you promote people based upon what, what, who they like to f- and what race they are versus can they do the job. You guys can have that. You can have California and everybody else that lives in the real world will continue to operate. You know, bro, like it's funny, you know, people get on planes. <laughs> people get on planes and they're like, man, I just hope this plane gets there safely. You know, now they gotta get on there. F- I hope my pilot's not gay. <laughs> bro, bro, li- listen, dude, I'm gonna tell you this. Like, I, dude, this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound totally f- I'm going to tell you this. I haven't flown for a commercial since like 2013. Mm-hmm. Okay. If I got to a point where I had to fly commercial again, mm-hmm. I'm driving. <laughs> like that is real shit. I'm not flying anywhere. There's no way, bro. No. There's no way. That's the, that's the thing. And in fact, like the nobody's... fact, bro, the fact that this has become an actual thing, now they're going to have to do something corrective to get the trust of the people back. Meaning like, I'm gonna have to see your scores, bro. <laughs> like, I'm gonna have to know, like, where'd you fly? Like, what, you know, what's your scores? Like, all you gotta do is just look in the cab and like, oh, okay, we're good. He's, straight. <laughs> He's a straight white guy, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you know that motherfucker passes test. <laughs> but bro, they extended I laugh, that. but you know. No, laugh, it's funny. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, it's not that funny. Bro, listen, but now. It's not that funny, but, motherfucker. It's gonna be. It ain't gonna be funny when motherfuckers are crashing in the, in the skies, bro. That's and people it. are getting their limbs, you know, the, their right limb instead of their left limb amputated and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it ain't gonna be funny. Doors yeah, flying bro. The I'm, plane. I'm telling you, yes. By all female engineering crew. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that? Bro, yes. Yeah, the, the door. Did you see the door that flew off that airplane like a week ago? <laughs> the motherfuckers that designed it was an all female team. <laughs> I, swear. I didn't make it up, man. It's fact. You can be mad at me all you want. It is what it is. I will turn this plane around. <laughs> dude. I'm just saying, like, dude, there, and I'm, listen, I'll say this. There's probably a whole bunch of females that are great engineers and could have, but if you're putting people because they're female and That's not it. because they're skilled in, this is crazy. Now you're understanding what companies have had to deal with for the last 15 years Mm -hmm. because there's been immense social pressure to promote people based around things other than are they good for the job? You know, like, dude, I used to post pictures on Instagram and it'd be like four white dudes in the comment. And this is, you know, the comments would be, oh, so you only hang out with white people. What the f*** are you talking about, dude? So I got to start thinking about this in every... I have to be intentional about it, dude. Like, oh, that is racist. That is that's racist. exactly, dude. That's oh, racist. Wait, wait, we're gonna take a picture. DJ, Hold come on. here real quick. Yeah, right. Stand in the picture so we don't get yelled at. <laughs> like that's racist, bro. We shouldn't be thinking about race. Now I'm not even. We, I'm listen, not in the picture because you listen, like dude. Me. Listen, and 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 there's a there's a there's a segment. We have to decide what we're gonna do. Real talk, okay? Are we going to say we are a country of people? from all different backgrounds and all different races who unify and come together over the content of their character, how good of people they are and what they believe in terms of American culture. Are, are we going to be those people? Are we going to be what America was founded to be? Are we going to be 
this amazingly diverse country that pro- that pro- provides the greatest technology, the the industry, all these things that we've been in the past that we've let slip through our hands. Are we going to be that? Or are we going to be a country where black people run around saying, I'm proud to be black. It's my greatest asset. Asian people do the same. Indians do the same. Women do the same. And then white men say, I'm f- proud to be white and f- you because like, dude, white men are the only people that can't say that. Can I f- say it? If you're not white, you don't understand that. And by the way, I don't even f- think that way because I've never been allowed to think that way. I've always believed the message of Martin Luther King, whether you guys say he was Marxist or whatever, what he f- said, I believe. Okay. Regardless of what he did, regardless if he was an adulterer or f- whatever you guys all accuse him to be, I don't give a shit. I don't care what the f- he did. His message is what I believe America should be. That's the truth. We should not be judging each other on our color. We should not be judging each other on anything other than are we good people or are we not? Is it good versus evil? And the alternative where every social movement is taking us, we're taking us to a point where white people are going to have to start saying, no, I'm I'm proud to be white. And if you don't like it, you. And then we have this situation where, where everybody's fighting. Like, you know what I'm saying? And dude, there is white people that think that's the way it should be. And I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I'm black. I, I don't I think, think that's the way it should be. I think we should be able. Because what has it gotten? Us, hold on. Bro? I think we should be able to celebrate each other's cultures and say, hey, this is really cool. Black people are, have this. White people have this. Asian people have this. Indian people have this. And we should be able to celebrate all those things without you know, <clears throat> taking it too serious where we could tease each other and still get along for the common good of what we're trying to create. Yep. You know, and, and people say, well, that's easy for you to say because you're white. Well, hold on. I'm, the only, I'm part of the only racial dynamic in the, in the last 40 years that's been legally able to be discriminated against. If a skilled white male and a skilled black male or a skilled black female or a skilled female is all in the same, the white guy doesn't get to job and that's legal that's been legal up until recently it's still legal it's just not legal on college campuses so if we're going to talk about who's actually been discriminated against i'm 44 years old that means for my whole life it's been that way okay so let's be real about where the discrimination is and isn't the discrimination is legal against white people it's not legal against anybody else and it should be illegal for everybody so You know, we we got a we got a decision to make about where we're going to be as a country. Are we going to let these f-ing communists divide us all up and make us think that our greatest asset is the f-ing shit we were born with, which is our skin color, which is ridiculous. That's a ridiculous statement. Like, you, if your biggest claim to fame is you're proud of being what you were born as, that's a pretty low f-ing standard, bro. Real talk. You were born with that, and that goes for every race. So we can either be that kind of place where we can all fight and argue about who's this or that and fight for equal rights and this and go through all this shit that we've already figured out. Or we could go to what Martin Luther King's message was, regardless of what you thought of him as a person and say, dude, content of character, different cultures, celebrate each other's cultures, be friends, tease each other a little bit, get along. We're all on the same team. It's called the American team. Those are the two ways we can go. And only one of those paths produces a strong country under our system of how we do things here in america the other path will eventually be conquered for sure because we're too busy fighting each other over shit that honestly in my opinion is irrelevant shit like we are americans we are fucking human beings if you're not an american you're still part of the human race and we have two segments of the human race in my opinion one is tyrants and two is regular people and if we started looking at it like that the tyrants would cease to exist Anyway, don't fly. <laughs> Severe intellectual and psychiatric disabilities. That's part Wait, of what? The FAA. That's who they're hiring now. Biden's FAA is actively recruiting people with severe intellectual and... Si- they're trying to destroy the country, dude. Yeah. We're on the street as they reached out to that, uh, that one lady for a hire. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Shut the f- up here, man. Is that a real headline? Bro, yes. It's on the website. No, the actively... Yes. It's part of their DEI inclusion plan. 
That's headlines from yesterday. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a real headline. Federal Aviation uh, Administration places a priority on hiring people with, quote, severe intellectual disability as part of its diversity and inclusion initiative. According to its website, the FAA claims, quote, individuals with targeted or severe disabilities are the most underrepresented segment of the federal workforce. Um, So under its People with Disabilities program, the agency says it, quote, actively recruits, hires, promotes, retains, develops, and advances people with disabilities. The FAA targets the following disabilities as a matter of policy, quote, hearing, vision, missing extremities, uh, partial paralysis, complete paralysis, epilepsy, severe intellectual disability, psychiat- psychiatric dwarfism. Um, no, psychiatric disability and, and dwarfism. And dwarfism yeah. Not psychiatric dwarfism. Oh, my bad. This is the act of destruction of the United States of America and its infrastructure and our ability to travel, everything. How, how, I don't believe anybody's with this shit. No. I, I I think I think they've got us all fooled, bro. I don't think anybody's with this shit. If we walked around real talk and f- asked any human being these basic questions, like would you do would you fly in a plane with that? Would you get surgery like that? Every single f- human on the f- earth is going to say no. no. I think they have us all fooled, bro. I think they've used the internet and technology to create a big enough bot network to make it appear like there's far more of them than there are of us. I don't meet anybody in real life that would say, like even the most liberal person I know, and I know some pretty ridiculously liberal people, they would not agree with that. No. Like this is, they're, people gotta come together, dude. Yeah. They gotta stop this shit. This is a big deal, man. Like real, real talk. Like what is this? Why are we doing this just to do it? Like where, where I want to hear the justification of this idea. Yeah. Where, where has, at what level is it a good idea to do any of this? For what reason? What are we doing? This is for people's feelings. I'm apparently, hold on real. I'm being serious. Is this for people's feelings? So they feel important. What it, are they like, I'm, I'm asking you guys. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, is this like, are they, are they, tr- when they say like, we're looking for intellectually, you know, f- damaged people, right? Like, are they trying to, like, get the first, in- like, intellectually fucked up human to be a pilot? It could be for, like, cleaning purposes or something. Like, not flying a plane. Well, You yeah. can't fly a plane. Yeah. But I'm just saying, what's, where's the idea? Is, is When they say inclusion, is that, who, like, who feels good there? The people, so we're, what we're doing here is we're continuing the participation trophy mentality from these people's youth. Is that correct? So we're taking people who weren't good enough to get in the game and we're propping them up so they feel better in society. But now we're doing this instead of like with little league T-ball, mm-hmm. we're doing this with like flying an airplane. Is that, is, am I understanding this correctly? That's, that's my read on it. Okay. Well, all you moms, <laughs> all you moms that rooted for this shit fuck you look at our fucking world now because of you people bro oh my kid deserves to play you don't practice with your kid you don't play catch with your kid you put your kid on a video game and they can't understand why he's fat and uncoordinated and can't hit a baseball and shit don't relate yeah and we're not giving him he's not getting what's in are we gonna do this in major leagues what are we doing so are we gonna are we gonna take someone with down syndrome and put them in an NFL football field to make them feel good yeah. and let them play, let them get killed. Would, would you do that? Would you guys be okay with that? Would you, would you be okay with the, with a, uh, you know, all the, all the basketball teams out here having to include a five foot six white dude for inclusion? Are we, is that, we're, is that okay? You gotta play it. Because if we're going to do this over here, we got to do it over here. Right. We got enough equity and inclusion in this country. It just hasn't been properly. Listen, motherfucker, you earned equity. Equity is earned. Okay, I've been doing this 25 years. Nobody gave me shit. I bled for this. And all of you, anybody out there who's entitled and says, you got it this, you have no idea, bro. You live in my shoes for one day, it would crush you. You would crush you. This idea that somehow certain people have got this 
easy ride or this free ride or this that or this bullshit. It's a bullshit idea. Joe Rogan put in a gazillion hours into his life. These people you admire that you think are successful, they have put in a gazillion hours while you were off and you were drinking and smoking crack and, you know, eating food and playing video games. Those guys were dedicated to their craft, bro. I'm sick of this diminishing of people's achievements because of some sort of quote unquote privilege. If I had privilege, it wouldn't take me 25 years. I'm tired of it. It's insulting to people who have actually built shit and worked their ass off and sacrificed their whole life. You know, I, dude, I'm, I take it personally. I'm sick of my accomplishments being diminished because other people won't get their fat ass off the couch and then say somehow they got you didn't get bro. I did things that you weren't willing to do. That's it. I wish there was cameras around my entire life for the last 25 years because I can promise you it's a movie that you wouldn't be able to watch. You wouldn't be able to watch it. That's how brutal it's been. And to be sitting here and saying, these people deserve careers because they are this or that. No, f you. Work on You me. earn your skill set. You do the work. You put in the work. You become that skilled. Then when the opportunity comes, you take it. Nobody's been given any opportunities around. Like it's not opportunities given. No, opportunities are not given. They are taken and they are not lost. They are seized by people who are willing to do things that you just aren't willing to do. That's how opportunities happen. They do not get awarded by some opportunity award fairy. Like these are people who take them. And if you want opportunity in your life, you're going to have to get skill set and take the opportunity. Nobody's coming to give it to you because you know why? They're valuable. And you know what people don't do is give valuable shit away. They take it for themselves. So if you want shit in your life and you want opportunity, you have to be willing to get the skills necessary and go take it. And if you lose an opportunity, it's because you didn't have the skills and you weren't willing to do what someone else was willing to do. And that is the way it works. That is natural order. That is reality. That is the way it's always worked here. And I'm tired of this participation trophy generation bullshit. To say that somebody deserves a job because of their gender or who they like to have sex with or what their race is is insane. That's what I'm saying. Like, what's the history? Like, how does those, how do those typically turn out? How does that work for people? Poorly. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're just giving the like, how does it work? We've had and enough? again, yeah. if we're gonna do this, let's make a decision as a collective of what we're going to do, because. Just like I'm saying we can either be this kind of America where we don't see race and we work together and we, we love each other's cultures and appreciate the culture, or we can all fight about which one's better. And then in that case, white people get to fight too. So we can all do that or we can all do this. Whichever one, let me know. That's what the f we should do. And in this situation, when we're talking about, uh, you know, <clears throat> participation trophy type shit, uh, are we going to do it like that or are we going to do it like this? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me know what the rules are. Because I'm tired of the rules being one-sided, bro. I'm tired of the rules being all these double standards. I'm, it's bullshit. Yeah. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us, guys, uh, let us know what you guys think. With that being said, man, let's close it out. We got our final segment of the show, as always. Our thumbs up. We're dumb as f <clears throat> This is where we bring a headline in and talk about it. We get one of those two options. And our thumbs up or dumb as f headline reads, I try to help people. Man on a mission to insulate pipes for seniors, disabled neighbors ahead of freeze. Mm. To be honest with you, I don't know. I like helping other people. Uh, so in Spring, Texas, in a world of bad news, it's refreshing to meet someone like Josh Eubank. The Spring, Texas man is about as regular as a Texan man can get. Hopping out of his pickup truck and work boots and a Carhartt jacket to the eye, he seems like uh, just another guy. But it's what's beyond the eye that makes Josh anything but a regular person. On Friday, Josh made a simple post on Facebook offering to help any elderly neighbors in his neighborhood of Spring, insul uh, of Spring insulate their pipes ahead of the big Arctic blast coming sat Sunday evening. Little did he know that message would have his phone ringing and vibrating ever since he pushed post. Uh, Gage. So how did you come up with this idea? Josh Eubank said, uh, quote, to be honest with you, I don't know. I like helping other people. And that's exactly how he spent his day and will be spending his weekend. Josh has a stockpile of pipe insulation that he picked up last year after a freeze came through southeast Texas. 
quote. So we have a farm. When you have a farm, you have a lot of pipes and a lot of like water lines, said Eubank. Had a lot of supplies already sitting out, so it wouldn't do me no good sitting over there. Uh, dozens upon dozens of senior citizens and disabled neighbors took Josh up on his offer. Um, on Friday alone, he insulated the pipes on five homes. He has a list of 40 more to go, um, and the list just keeps on growing. Thankfully, he picked up some help along the way. Uh, quote, he wanted to go around helping people fix their faucet. The hose outside said, uh, said Isa Hakim, who's better known as the lemonade guy. And I was like, you know what? I might as well close out my lemonade stand and come along and help him see who can help. Together, they've been crisscrossing town to help make sure seniors who wouldn't have another way to protect their pipes have a fighting chance against the frigid cold. Here's the original Facebook post um, uh, of Eubank and uh, some pictures that he posted along with uh, Isa Hakeem, who's been helping him. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's what's up, dude. That's what America's about. Help each other. And by the way, if you're listening on audio, guess what? One of those guys is white. And the other guy, guess what he is? Oh, he's black. Do you think they're sitting there arguing over whose race is better? Or do you think they're just working together to get a job done? Holy shit, this isn't complicated. And they don't look like they went to Harvard, okay? So, like, I'm just saying, this is a simple concept. What I'm saying here is simple. What we're saying here is simple. Very easy, dude. We're all people. We're all trying to be good. We're all trying to do good shit. I'm, I'm so sick of all this shit, dude. This race shit. This first shit. This, I get a pass because I'm this or that. No. And anybody who's with that, bro, you're fucking wrong. I don't think anybody's even with it. No, this is reality, bro. This is the real world. That's what the real world looks like. Every day and twice on Sunday, man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So thumbs up on this, right? Yeah, for sure. Sweet. Yeah. Well, guys, Andy, that's all I got. Man, I got a lot more. What's wrong with everything, dude? Like, for real. Like, what is this? Like, think about how insane this shit sounds. Like, when we actually talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, here we are, bro. How, how, how many, what's the anniversary today of Martin Luther King's death? How many years? What did you look at me for? I'm, I'm not. I'm waiting oh. for Madonna to look it up. Why are you paranoid? Oh, he died in 68. So how long ago was that? 56 years. 56, 56 years. Years. Almost 60 years. Almost 60 years later, bro. Yeah. We're sitting here talking about the same shit. Talk about the same shit. That's what they want us to talk about. To, to get us off the fact that this that is they're actually f- what it looks like. Yeah, and <clears throat> to get us off from the fact of what they're doing to us. Mm-hmm. This is why they don't want unity. This is why they will divide, they will create as much racial tension as possible in any way possible, including blowing out of proportion certain crimes, including, uh, you know, creating resentment amongst the races by giving certain races privilege over other races. That shit should not exist in 2024 America, regardless of the race. I'm f- over it, dude. I think people are too. Anyway, don't be a hoe. Share the show. <laughs>